Hi, I'm Amy. This is House of Nashites, and today we are making slow cooker French dip sandwiches. Okay, so let's get started making our French dip sandwiches. And these are super easy, like the prep is really fast and it can actually be even faster than what I'm about to show you. What I like to do is I like to sear my roast before I actually put it in the slow cooker. It seals in the juices, it just adds a layer of flavor that I really think is delicious and makes a difference. You could totally skip this and just put everything into the slow cooker and start cooking it and you're ready to go. This extra five minutes, I think will help. Here's how I do it. I take my roast, which I've got a three, this is like a three to three and a half pound beef chuck roast. That's what you wanna look for. It has nice marbling of fat in the meat um, and it will break down and be really tender. So it's a beef chuck roast. And then I'm going to season it with coarse kosher salt. And I never measure um, because your roasts are always going to be a little bit different sized, but you just shake it on and a tip, you've probably seen Salt Bay who like does the salt from way up high. The reason for that actually is when you season from higher up, you get more even coverage of your seasoning on your meat. If you season down close, you get like spots of seasoning. So we're gonna season with salt and then coarsely ground black pepper. And be pretty generous because this is going to develop a crust and you've got all this meat inside that's not being touched by the seasoning. So it's okay to be pretty generous around the edges. And we're just gonna flip it over and do the other side. And now I also like to get the sides of my roast. So I'm going to lift this up and in all of that salt and pepper that's kind of fallen off around the edges, I just kind of make sure to get my sides of the meat all evenly coated so that it's seasoned all the way around. That's set. So now we're going to heat up our pan over medium high heat until it's nice and hot, add some olive oil and sear it off. I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so I've got my pan nice and hot and I'm going to add some olive oil. Okay, and once that oil is hot, we're going to take the meat and it's going to like sizzle and spit at you because the pan is so hot. So it's just gonna take a minute or two on each side. And the reason this needs to be hot is it's going to sear the outside of the meat. It's not gonna cook it through or anything. It's just developing a nice crust that seals in the juices so that it has better flavor to the meat while it cooks. But like I said, you can totally skip this part if you want to. It just takes a few extra minutes to do it. So I usually do it, but I've totally made this without bothering to sear my meat and it turns out just fine. Okay, this has been going for about a minute and a half or so, and we're gonna flip this to the other side. So just be careful that it doesn't splatter on you. But you can see it's got this nicely brown colored crust on the top. We're going to also sear the sides of it too, and then just stick it in the slow cooker. Okay, so now that we've got our meat seared, we're just going to transfer it to the slow cooker. Stick it down in there. And then there's just a few more ingredients. So we've got some beef broth. You could also use beef consomme. Um, I also have like used beef bouillon or better than bouillon and water, oops. And then I've got water and it's two cups of each. I'll leave a link below to the recipe that you can print out. And then it's dry French onion soup or just dry onion soup mix. We'll just sprinkle that on top. And that's literally all there is to it. We're going to put our lid on and let this cook on low for six to eight hours. You could do it on high for like three to four hours too and like push it, but letting it cook low and slow all day long is great because then when you get home from a busy day, dinner is ready. It's just taking it out, shredding it, and making a little salad to serve when you've got dinner ready to go. You can also, when you're planning on how much this will feed, a three pound roast will cook down quite a bit. It'll feed about six to eight people. Usually you can plan on around half a pound of pre-cooked weight for your meat. And by the time it cooks down, that's about a serving for one person. 
Okay, so now our roast has been in the slow cooker for about six to eight hours. Uh, mine has gone for eight hours. So we're gonna take it out and shred it up. So all I have to do is take the lid off. And we're gonna transfer this and it's going to be super, super tender. So this should probably fall apart as we're taking it out. So we'll just try to get most of the meat out of here. You don't want shredded meat and you want like more slices of beef for your sandwiches. What I would recommend doing is cooking this on low for four hours and then taking the meat out and slicing it thin. It'll still hold together. Oh, I'm gonna splatter everywhere. <laughs> It'll still hold together at that point, and then you can just put the meat back in and finish cooking it for another two to three hours, and it'll be super tender without falling apart, and you'll have more slices of meat. Personally, I really prefer shredded meat, and so I like just cooking it until it's super tender, like six to eight hours. So once we've got our meat out, I'm going to let that cool for just a second, and I'm going to get our au jus sauce going. All right, so all I have to do is set that over to the side and we're going to lift this out and pour it into a larger bowl for now. I like to do this if you have um, like a fat separator or something, you might wanna use that, but I'm just gonna pour this off. Okay, and this is what we're going to use to serve in individual little cups for people to dip their sandwiches in and it's so, so good. It's got the savory beef broth and the liquid that's cooked off the meat and that dried soup um, mix to it. So it's just really, really savory and warm and amazing. And you can kind of see the fat is already starting to rise to the top and there's not a ton of it to get rid of. A fat separator will make that really easy or you could just spoon it off um, to get rid of it and just serve it with the nice juices underneath. We've got our meat and I'm just going to take two forks and I'm just going to gently break it up into um, shredded pieces or chunks and that's what we're going to use on our sandwiches. And you can break this up as much or as little as you want I really love how tender and easy this falls apart. And that happens because of using a chuck roast, which is nicely marbled, and the slow cooking process. And if there are any large pieces of fat or gristle, um, you can just toss those because you don't want to add those to your sandwiches. All right, so now that we've got our meat shredded, we're just going to top um, the bottom bun or roll that we're using. So traditionally, I think that French dip sandwiches use more of a soft like hoagie roll, um, but I actually really love like more of an artisan or ciabatta type of bread because I like the crusty, oops, the crusty bread on the outside um, and I like how it soaks up the juices without getting quite as soggy as I feel like hoagie rolls tend to get. So use whatever you like, your favorite rolls but I like these nice ciabatta rolls. So we're gonna pile up the meat as much as you want on your French dip sandwiches. Then we're going to top it with some provolone or Swiss cheese. I have provolone today. And then we're going to put it into the oven and broil it just until the cheese is melted and the other side, like the top bun, is toasted. Okay, and then I've got my provolone cheese. We're just gonna put these on top. Okay, and we're gonna put these back in the oven or into the oven until the provolone has melted from the broiler and then we'll eat. Okay, so we've got our sandwiches. It literally takes like 30 seconds under the broiler to get the cheese to melt and to toast up the buns a little bit. So now I've got a little bit of parsley that's chopped and I'm just going to sprinkle it, mostly just for color, not so much flavor. But when you have foods like this, a little pop of color kind of makes a difference. It's a little bit of flavor too. And then just top it with one of your buns and put it on a plate with your au jus sauce that's in an individual bowl for dipping, and we are ready to go. Dinner is served. Okay, now it's the best part. I get to eat, and I'm so hungry because I've been smelling this for hours now, but it's so exciting. I've got my au jus sauce and my sandwich, and I'm gonna dip it in. And the meat and that crusty bread soaks up the au jus.
Mm. I need a napkin. These are so delicious. It makes such a good dinner. And I love that you can literally prep it in 10 minutes, let it cook the whole day, and dinner's ready when you get home. Just grab like a nice salad to go with it and you've got a complete meal ready to go in hardly any time with very little effort. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys love this recipe and it really comes in handy when you've got those busy nights. And if you like it, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about it and what slow cooker recipe you'd like to see me make next.